Production provided by... Only two things are forever. Love and Liberty Mutual customizing your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. And if anyone objects to this marriage... Kevin, no, not today. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Life doesn't stop for diabetes. Be ready for every moment with Glucerna. It's the number one doctor-recommended brand that's scientifically designed to help manage your blood sugar. Live every moment. Glucerna. Yeah, we had a blast. Make sure you join us on Monday for our backstage exclusive at the iHeart Country Festival. Plus, music legend Patti LaBelle brings the mama drama to the neighborhood. I'm his mother, and I'm as mean as he is. And you better believe I'm going to go ask Miss Patty for a pie. <laughs> um, before we go, big congrats to our friends at NCIS LA. Sunday marks their 300th episode, and only E.T. is with the cast. Congrats, y'all. Bye, everybody. Yes, entertainment tonight. It's going to be the most romantic rose ceremony. What do they say on The Bachelor? We're going to have our version of a rose ceremony. <laughs> Not sure any roses will be handed out, but there will be plenty of drama. Happening now. A two week long trial comes to an end today after a woman who was convicted of a murder for hire plot finds out just how long she'll be in jail. We'll take you inside the courtroom. That's coming up. A major esports event being held in San Antonio today. Coming up, we'll tell you about the battle for Texas and what it means for the gaming industry here in the Alamo City. And as we head into the weekend, we're going to crank up the heat a bit, actually bringing it to record challenging territory. I'll tell you how hot it's going to get and compare it to the records in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And we begin with an update on a series of catalytic converter thefts in New Braunfels. Investigators believe that these three are the suspects. The New Braunfels Police Department says they are Samantha Villarreal, Ladarian Deshaun Walker, and Javon Kent. All of them are from the Houston area. They were arrested yesterday, but not for theft. New Braunfels police officers found them with nine catalytic converters that were believed to be stolen, as well as the equipment to cut them out of vehicles. Now they're investigating further. So now the New Braunfels PD is looking for the people who own those converters. And tonight at six, our Garrett Berger is going to speak with a local mechanic about the money that that could save the owners. 20 years in prison. It's how long Angelica Navarro de Paz has been sentenced following her conviction for hiring a hitman to kill her boyfriend's sister. The two week trial ended today. KSAT reporter Erica Hernandez tells us what led to the jury's decision and the reaction. The defendant is guilty of the offense of solicitation to commit capital murder. Angelica Navarro de Paz had no reaction as her sentence was handed down. We assess her punishment at confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for a term of 20 years. In addition, we assess a fine of $10,000. For two weeks, Navarro de Paz's trial was full of emotion. Up to now, to this day, I don't know how to take care of my children because they're in danger. On Wednesday, she was found guilty, and that same jury handed down today's sentence. The jury just came back with, with punishment verdict of 20 years, uh, and uh, uh, we, we believe that that's a reasonable uh, and just uh, punishment. Back in 2017, Navarro de Paz was arrested after trying to hire an undercover police officer to kill her boyfriend's sister, who owed her money. The prosecution hoping that now the victim in this case can live a life without fear. I do hope that the victim in this case is able to rest at peace tonight, knowing that the person that victimized her for all this time, the person who did this to her, um, is going to be behind bars for the next 20 years. Of that 20-year sentence, Angelica Navarro de Paz only has to serve a quarter of that before she's eligible for parole. We're also hearing that it's possible that she will file an appeal on that sentence. At the Kilinda Reeves Justice Center, Eric Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. We have some new information on a fatal shooting from Wednesday. The man who was shot along I-35 in Ben Zingelman now identified as 29-year-old Andrew Jacob Runhell. The medical examiner says he was shot in the abdomen before he crashed into another car and hit a tree. That crash shut down the highway for hours during rush hour. The last check, no one's been arrested. San Antonio police now investigating a man's death after his body was found under an exit ramp near downtown overnight. That was under I-37 South at Nolan and Elm Streets. Officers say the man had signs of trauma, 
but it's unclear at this point what led to his death. We don't know his name yet. Taking a live look outside with your traffic authority. It is rush hour on a Friday, and that usually means pretty slow traffic. And you can see this is a place that's got some issues. This is I-10 at De Zavala. You can see they've closed off the exit ramp here uh, for some sort of a wreck, it looks like, or a stalled vehicle. So traffic moving along slowly there. It's an area that you might want to avoid. And as we said, the weekend upon us, that means as hot as it is, it's going to get hotter. That's right. Our friend Adam Kasky says triple digit hot. That's why the city is going to be starting to open its cooling centers and libraries around town. There are 16 of them total and they're going to be open both tomorrow and Sunday. So more cooling centers are going to be open on Monday and VIA is also going to offer fare free trips to and from those cooling centers as long as they're open. You can find out all of this information on KSAT. Dot com. Important inf information to remember, Adam, because we're hitting triple digits. Well, that's what we're forecasting, about 100 degrees briefly Saturday afternoon, and that's coming about eight weeks earlier than average for the first 100 degree day. That's assuming we officially hit it at the airport, the official climate site in San Antonio. Anyway, 96 so far today. That's the high temperature of the record. 99. We're not far from the record today. Currently at 95 at the airport, a dew point of 62, which makes it feel like it's one degree warmer. We're seeing these afternoon dew points drop off a little bit, so we lose a little bit of that humidity later in the day. 95 in Lakey, 97 Floresville, Seguin, 93. Mike o right now at 97 degrees in Bernie, Bull Verde, 95. We're feeling the heat. Unseasonably warm out there, mostly clear warm, increasing humidity tonight. I'm going to talk more into in detail about how the humidity is going to change throughout the day tomorrow. And of course, go over those high temperatures, compare them to the records and even take a peek at next week, how the temperatures modify in just a bit. All right. Looking forward to that, Adam. Thank you. Now a new vaccine warning. The FDA is announcing changes on who can get the Johnson and Johnson COVID vaccine. It's in relation to a risk of a rare and dangerous blood clotting condition that could appear shortly after you get vaccinated. Gloria Pasmino explains in this story. The Food and Drug Administration announced it's limiting the emergency use authorization of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. The FDA said the change is due to the risk of a rare but dangerous clotting condition known as TTS. TTS stands for thrombosis with thr uh, thrombocytopenia, which translates to clotting with low uh, blood platelets. What uh, we noticed about a year ago was that a, a relatively small number of people were developing unusual clots or clots in unusual places like the brain often a week to two weeks after getting uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Only people 18 and older who cannot access other vaccines are allergic to them or those who would refuse to get vaccinated otherwise will be able to receive the Johnson & Johnson shot. Despite the new limitations, officials say the risk is extremely low. We're talking about one in two million people ended up having uh, a, a really horrible outcome. Again, you know, three in a million getting any kind of a side effect on this on, on terms of that uh, TTS that we're tracking closely. So it's extremely rare. Side effects typically show up one to three weeks after vaccination. Officials stressed those who have yet to be vaccinated against the virus have good alternatives. The bottom line is there are other options. We have Moderna and Pfizer, both of which don't have this rare side effect. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. In a previous statement, Johnson & Johnson has said that it is aware of the rare cases and that, quote, the safety and well-being of the people who use our products is our number one priority. You may not know this, but May is National Foster Care Month. And here in Texas, there are thousands of children who are stuck in the system. Many of them are waiting to find their forever family, and many others are hoping to reunite with their loved ones. This was the basis of an event today at the Christian Family Church International on the Northeast Side. Jamie Masters, State Commissioner of the Department of Family and Protective Services, says the solution isn't just prevent child abuse, but also work to keep families together. We don't want foster care to be about just adoption. Kids want to go home. Kids don't want to be in foster care. And so we have to find a way to make that happen. And the church is uniquely positioned to work with us to do that. Today also provided opportunity to learn about practical tools and faith-based resources to help unmask childhood trauma and loss. 
People in South San Antonio have another a way now to keep food on the table. There's a new food pantry in the area. Community First Health Plans has officially opened its first of 14 food pantries within the Harlandale ISD region. This one that you're looking at is at Gilbert Elementary on East South Cross. And it's not your typical food pantry because this one is six and a half feet tall and stacks loads of non-perishable food. And you know what? It's also available to the public 24-7. We do feed them breakfast, lunch here, free at, at Hornendale. We also provide suppers for them. Uh, so this is just another avenue, maybe on a weekend or late evening, that they have access to more food. We told you there were plans for 14. The other 13 food pantries are going to be installed at different schools in Harlandale ISD before next fall, and you can help. You can drop off cans of food at the pantries, or you can volunteer to store food in your own home. There's more information at communityfirsthealthplans.com slash food dash pantry. So the battle for Texas took place today in San Antonio. Thousands, and we do mean thousands, of gaming fans went to the new Tech Port Center and arena for this major esports event. RJ Marquez was one of them. He's super excited about this. He tells us that this is believed to be the start of some big things for esports in the Alamo City. The Tech Court Center and Arena is charged up today for the first big esports event at the new entertainment venue on the southwest side. This is probably the most sophisticated arena that I have seen built specifically for esports. Malik Forte has been in the gaming industry for years and says this arena is tailor made for competitions like today's. Tons of concessions, uh, multi, multiple levels for people to sit and watch the game. I feel like you can really immerse yourself and still be a part of the event no matter where you are in this venue. This event is called the Battle for Texas. Teams from Houston and Dallas are playing the new Overwatch game in front of fans for the first time since 2020. It's been two years that all of our competitive play has been halted. In terms of in-person play, we've been playing all of our matches online. San Antonio is now playing a part in the growing esports industry. Lori Burgess, COO of the Houston Outlaws, says many kids are turning to esports and facilities like the Tech Port Center and Arena give them a chance to get in the game early on. This is a sport and an industry that is growing like mad, and we're seeing more and more young people really thrive at very early ages. Malik remembers when events like today's were held in small hotel ballrooms. He says esports is leaps and bounds from where it started and only getting bigger. Probably one of the most accessible sports that there is. Not everybody is athletically gifted. It can go out on like a basketball court and slam dunk or whatever, but everybody can sit down and teach themselves how to play a game. All right, Ursula and Stephanie, we are live inside Techport Arena and Center, where I got to tell you, it's gotten a little loud, but it is definitely game on in here. We are a near capacity crowd, thousands of fans that have filled this brand new arena out here on the southwest side. I got to tell you, there is a lot of energy in here, and this is my first time covering an official esports event, and by the looks of it, esports is ready to take off here in San Antonio. Reporting live from the southwest side and the Techport Center and Arena, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. There's, it's so hot there that even the smoke, but that has nothing to do with the temperatures outside. I say. People are just excited. Smoke machine. Yes. Well, still ahead on the news at 5, keeping your kids safe. Right now, major tech companies are making it easier for you to see what your kids are doing on their phones. We're going to look at parental control settings for Apple, Microsoft, and Google devices when we come back. Yeah, it's all about safety. You don't want to miss it. The news at 5 continues after the break. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT Newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 today. That leaked draft by the Supreme Court that would overturn Roe versus Wade, causing an uproar all across the nation. It is a draft, so not final, but already so many people are weighing in. There are those who embrace it and hope the case is overturned, but there are those who are outraged by it. And that's why one local organization is helping women seeking abortions get funding. We're spending money on gas, we're spending money on food, um, just so that people know that they are taken care of completely. Tonight at 6, we'll tell you about this grassroots effort based right here in San Antonio. Alicia Barrera speaks to the founder about the donations that are pouring in to help patients directly who hope to travel out of town or out of state for in-clinic procedures. Those stories and more coming up on the News at 6. 
It's something that you worry about all the time and that is keeping your kids safe when they're always on their phones. Well, here's some good news. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has more on what phone companies are doing to give parents more control and also limit kids screen time. Whitson Gordon is in for years of monitoring his kids online time, but for now, my biggest fear is just them seeing something that's too scary or something that they weren't really ready to learn. It's a job for parents, reminding kids not to share personal information or photos and worrying about them talking to strangers, stumbling across inappropriate content or just too much screen time. But there are free options to help you as tech companies improve parental controls. Take Microsoft Family Safety. It's built into Windows and it's also available as an app for Xbox, Android, and iOS. Apple's parental controls for iOS and Mac are located in screen time settings. Both allow you to limit screen time and set content restrictions on your kids' devices. There's also the Google Family Link app. It's available for Android and iOS. With Google Family Link and the Google account you set up for your kids, you can do anything from monitor their app usage to seeing where they are on a map. The tools from Microsoft, Apple, and Google also let you restrict the apps your kids can access. YouTube lets you set up supervised experience for kids under 13 that determines the types of videos kids can watch. A safer option for younger audiences is YouTube Kids. He mostly watches science videos on YouTube. That's how he spends most of his time on his iPad. It's also important for parents to just talk to their kids and encourage them to say something if they see something disturbing, whether it's inappropriate content or bullying. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh. You could also spend some time outside. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's an idea. It's an idea, but it might not be as attractive. Unless you're in a place like this is Pearsall Park. There's a cool splash pad, but I'm trying to say how many people are braving even 96 degrees out there right now, Adam? Oh, yeah, and a lot of sunshine, too. Don't forget the sunscreen and to stay hydrated out there with all this heat. It's going to be one of those weekends where we're really cranking up the heat. A sunny stretch of weather as well. Record challenging temperatures this weekend and also a brief drop in the humidity tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to start with that. Let's take a look at the conditions. 95 degrees. The dew point is 62. OK, so it feels a little. We have a hint of humidity out there. The dew point has been dropping throughout the afternoon just over the past couple of hours. This is the trend for that humidity. The dew point tomorrow. The day starts very muggy right around 70 degree dew point and then we get toward the afternoon hours about three, four o'clock, right when we have our hottest part of the day and that's when the, the dew point and the humidity drops a little bit in turn. 100 degrees is what we're forecasting and the feels like temperature should be pretty close to it. Maybe about 101, uh, 102 in some locations that where the dew points don't mix out as much. So yes, it's going to be hot tomorrow, but I do expect a little drop in that humidity during the peak heating of the day. Not so much on Sunday. We'll get to that in a moment. Temperatures right now 100 Pleasanton and Catula, Laredo 101, New Braunfels 96 along with Hondo. We're feeling it out there. Stinson 101, 94 in Bulverde, Comfort 97. You get the idea. Unseasonably warm and not, not far from record challenging heat there outside today. Tomorrow morning, we start the day near 70, and I think most of us in the lower 70s. Divine Castroville 71, Bulverde 69 degrees. Then by the afternoon, Take this in Seguin 99, Nixon Smiley 101, Sabinal 103, Uvalde 104. I mean, Helotus and Bernie about 97 with Bulverde, but we are forecasting 100 degrees for most of San Antonio. And then you get into some outlying areas, particularly Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, 104, 105 for those air temperatures tomorrow. 98 degrees on Sunday. We don't think 100 just because of the extra humidity lingering around into the afternoon. The higher the humidity, the less your air temperature typically warms up. And then we get into next week still in the 90s, well above the average high of 84 degrees. Yeah, it's not going to be 100, but we're still going to feel unseasonably warm temperatures out there. All right, really quickly, let's talk about the weather pattern. Quite across Texas, there is a lot of of activity out there in the eastern third of the U.S. Severe weather zone that's in the mid Atlantic and southeastern states. This is a wound up system that's dumping some good moisture far from Texas right now. I wish we could tap into it. There is a system moving into the Pacific Northwest moisture with that. Unfortunately, 
I don't think that's going to make it here. So we've got a dry forecast with a sunny stretch on the way. Tomorrow, 73 in the morning, 100 in the afternoon, south wind at 5 to 15. Bit of a breeze. And then we get into Mother's Day, 74 in the morning. Could be some morning fog. Don't be surprised to see that. 98 in the afternoon, but remaining humid. So it's going to feel like it's about 103 Mother's Day afternoon for about four or five hours. And then we get into next week, morning clouds, afternoon sun, the typical routine with those temperatures in the 90s. Woo. Thank you. Yeah, that's all we can do. No reaction, just woof. Yeah, because that's yeah. what we're going to say when we go outside. We need a, we need a fan just looking at this. So the, speaking of something that's hot, I mean, there's so many rumors and questions that people had about Jerry Jones. Was he driving the car when he got into an accident? And apparently now we have an answer. Yeah, it turns out he was actually driving the vehicle that hit another vehicle at intersection in Dallas. When we come back, we'll let you know the latest details as we have learned. And also, Joel Embiid is clear to play for the 76ers, but will he suit up tonight? Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. We are learning more about the traffic accident that sent Cowboys owner Jerry Jones to the hospital on Wednesday night. Turns out Jones was driving the car that broadsided another vehicle. And there is video of that incident that emerged since the accident. Authorities say a light-colored sedan tried to turn left from the right-hand lane and was struck on the driver's side door by Jones's darker-colored sedan. Jones is seen limping while talking on a cell phone after the accident and pulls up his pants leg to assess his injury. He was released from Parkland Hospital just hours after the arriving. The accident happened shortly after 8 p.m. at the intersection of Wolf Street and Hines Boulevard. No other injuries were reported. Joel Embiid has been cleared. The NBA's per, uh, concussion protocol and did work out with the team today at this morning's shoot-around before Game 3 tonight against the Miami Heat. Embiid suffered the concussion and orbital fracture in the series clinching game against Toronto. Has not played in the Eastern Conference semifinals against the Heat yet. As a result, the Sixers are down 0-2 going into tonight's Game 3. Even with Embiid is able to come back, he will do so without hardly having any conditioning work. It's what happens in the playoffs. A lot of guys do it. Devin Booker did it. Um, played pretty well. You know, it's just, it's tough. Uh, this is the playoffs. You don't get time like in a regular season to come back and, 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 you know, work out with staff and stuff for three or four days. Unfortunately, that's not how the playoffs are built. Uh, when guys go down in the playoffs, they often have to come back with, with no work. Uh, and that makes it very difficult for them uh, when they come back. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to play great, or, or sometimes they do. You just don't know. I ain't like the Sixers. The Dallas Mavericks find themselves down 0-2 in their best of seven Western Conference semifinal series against the Suns. And now the series shifts to Dallas tonight for game three. It's unfamiliar territory for the Mavs, even though Luka Doncic has been able to score 45 in game one in this series and another 35 in game two. I think a lot of players are uh, first time in this situation. Uh, we believe, man. We got They got to win four, so it's not over yet. We're going to go back home. Uh, our crowd is amazing. Uh, so we're going to believe till the end. All right. The WNBA regular season tips out tonight. And on the sidelines of all the home teams will be a logo on the court saluting former Baylor Bear Brittany Griner. The U.S. government believes she is being wrongfully detained in Russia. And the logo will include her initials and the number 42. It's that game against Phoenix tonight that Becky Hammond actually makes her debut as a head coach of the Las Vegas Aces. Okay. We'll but be looking out for that. More on that tonight on the night beat. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Record high tomorrow, 100. We are predicting 100. That would tie the record, which has been in place since 1998. Sunday, the record's 102. We're expecting about 98. And then we just trim off a few degrees, low to mid-90s next week. Right. Thanks, World Adam. News is next. We'll see you at 6. Have a good night.